Hi there, Ian Thompson here with the final part of the camera matching tutorial. In this final section we're going to just create some geometry inside of SketchUp, export that geometry to Lightwave and then use that geometry to create our final render. So let's get started. Okay, we're going to do a very quick uh, little bit of modeling down here in this region here just to show you how to create start creating your geometry inside of SketchUp. So let's zoom in to this area where we positioned our axis in the previous tutorial. We don't need this character so we'll delete her out and we'll grab the pencil tool here and you'll notice when I use the pencil tool immediately um, it starts snapping to these axes, blue, green and red axis that we set up before. And this is why we took the trouble to position the origin point here because it gives us a very good starting point. So the first thing we do with the pencil tool here is click on the origin point. We start to build out from the origin. When we do that, we notice that now when I move the uh, sorry the uh, pencil tool, uh, I get this line that's following the pencil tool along the axis. In this particular case, it's on the green axis. This is an inference line, and it's showing me where, if I should click down on the mouse, where that line will will be um, located. Uh, where that edge rather will be located. So if I follow the guides of the bricks in the photograph I will go to this first um, uh, edge here and click the mouse down and you'll see now that SketchUp's put a line, an edge down for me. So at this point now I can change the direction of my pencil to follow the red axis um, you can also use um, your arrow keys on your keyboard to help you infer the line so it is direct and so it is um, following the correct axis. Sometimes um, you can be thinking that you're on the correct axis, but um, when you spin your model around, you'll find that it's a mess. And the reason for that is that it, um, at some point along the way, um, you, you lost the axis um, direction when you were actually creating your geometry or your edges. So always make sure that, that you are following the correct axis and it's pretty easy and, and it'll go smoothly for you. So at this point I'm going to continue the line to this edge here and put another vertice down there and create another edge. And now moving across You'll notice that when I uh, go over this um, red axis here, you can see that I get an inference point again showing me that should I place a, another vertice on this red axis, it will be parallel and in line with this edge and this vertice. So I'm going to do that and pl place another one down there and then all that's left to do is to go back to the beginning and click another point. And there you go, I've created my first polygon, my first piece of geom geometry. So let's do a few more of these. I'll start at this point this time and create another line over here to this edge of the brick here. Draw down on the red axis again it snaps so I know that I'm in line with my origin point at this, at this uh, point and then back to the origin like so. There's my second polygon created. Now you don't have to keep coming back to the origin point it just so happens that that's the direction I was working in. So let's create another one here which goes up to the edge. So I'll start from this corner Go up to this line, uh, to the edge of the brick here, and then follow across, snap to the red axis, and then back down again to here. And, I'll, and let's create another one here. So I'm going to start at the origin again, move down, 
So I'm going to across the bottom of this um, uh, glass panel here and I'll just go beyond the panel a little bit and then come back along the green axis, place the point down, vertice down there and snap back to this, this one here. So at any point here I can create an, um, some geometry which, which mimics this glass panel. So let's do that quickly. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer. I need to be a little bit tighter on the, um, on the image here. Pencil tool again. And I'm going to place this time on this edge here. Um, I'm going to just eyeball it and try and get my vertice and add a vertice um, as close to this right corner of this panel as I can. Once that vertice is down, I'll then stay on that red axis again and snap to this edge like so. Now this gives me a thickness, the thickness of this glass panel here. It's not 100% accurate because I, I was just eyeballing it, so it's not going to be dead on, but it gives me a rough estimated um, thickness to, to, this, um, to this piece of geometry which I'm going to create. So all I need to do now is, is just um, create a, a, an extra edge along here and then I'm going to swap the tool to the push-pull tool and I'm going to select this area, this polygon here that I've just created and I'm going to extrude it up. Now I'm not going to go all the way up with this. You can see that this geometry here now is going to mimic the glass panel. Now if we just quickly use our orbit tool we can see what we've created. Let's zoom out just a little bit. We've got these polygons here with an extruded polygon from, um, from the geometry that we initially created. And that's all there is to it really. It's just a, it, you don't have to use SketchUp to do this. It's just easy to do it because of um, the, the snapping uh, facilities. Plus you've, al you've already set up your, um, your background plate and, and matched that camera inside of the program. So to at least give yourself a good starting point, you can create a little bit of geometry and then if you prefer you can jump over into Lightwave and continue building in, inside of Lightwave. Either way is, is fine. So let's stop this section here and just very quickly look at the finished version that I created. So you can see I've gone and put quite a bit of detail in here and even matching the bricks, uh, the rough position of the bricks. I've built a wall um, trying to mimic the actual wall that was in the original photograph as well as this plane down here in order to catch the shadow because this shadow that was cast on this particular day uh, is very important in terms of our matching for the render because it gives me a, a direction of the sun and we've also got this uh, wall in the background here and uh, and these glass panels um, which I've extruded up, which, which we just looked at earlier. Um, one of the things is that what my intention here is to is to just use this geometry um, as, as a reference. So the reason I've just extruded these up is to give me kind of a, a, a good base as to how these were constructed originally when these glass panels were actually inserted into this um, into this floor. So I'm going to take that, take these um, and and do something different with them because there's no actual point in um, you know creating a glass panel over the glass panel of the um, of the original picture because it's just there's no point in doing that. It's already there. It's already visible. So what I intend to do here is to create some extra geometry along here using these these panels that I've created. So that's all we've done in SketchUp. Um, the next stage 
we're going to now export this and place it into Lightwave. So to do that, um, if you remember from the previous tutorial, we installed some plugins and the plugin that we're going to use this time is the export Lightwave object. So we click on that. It gives us our folder structure here where we can go in and we can save our Lightwave object inside our objects folder. Hit save and you're done. So let's now hop over into Lightwave.